when it's going live, I like to just sing. Going live. We like to do. Going to live, going to... Oh, wait, wait. All right, so today we have some guest stars. So we've got Ben Goldstein Feldman Chester. Something like that. Uh, he, he's <laughs> semitically challenged as I am. Uh, we've got Jenna uh, Jameson. No? <laughs> I've heard that joke since high school. Wow. I know, and probably nobody you gets it anymore. It yeah. Okay. And then we've got my lovely wife, Lara, who doesn't get a nickname because I want to continue to be live peace. Yeah, be married. Be married. Exactly. Okay. So I have some guest guests hosts today. Um and we will wait for just a moment while some people filter in. This was the time that folks said they wanted to check out the live stream. Uh, and so I'm trying to do it when you guys ask for it on a Sunday. Sunday happens to actually be sunny today. So I'm going to go through my tanks a little bit today. And I'm also going to uh, chat with my fellow fish enthusiasts. These people have come together because of their love of fish. Woo! Woo! Which is a lie. They're just friends. I don't think any... Well, Ben cares a little bit about fish, right, Ben? Yeah. Yeah. He, he actually bought me my leopard... Uh, my leopard... Uh, Rainbow-tailed leopard slash tiger endlers. He bought those for me. So this guy's responsible for those, which will be coming out to you guys. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you have any questions for my friends, uh, feel free to... Uh, inquire, inquisition, I have a rack, we can make them talk if needed. So, uh, I'm going to show you what's new in the tanks right now. I know people are filtering in as they do with live streams. But, alright, so we'll get back to my friends in a moment. But basically, uh, in my tanks, I have decided that this tank, other than the tiger slash leopard endlers, we are going to be raising... Um, Danios. And so we've got gold ring Danios, which you've seen in some recent videos. They're beautiful. They were brought in as a dither. Um, CO2's been working in this tank, so you can see how much it has grown, which is nice. Uh, also, I've got some nearite snails in here now that came from tampaaquaculture.com. Uh, and an autosynclus that's just eaten on some dead leaves. He's been there all day. I hope he's okay. Are you okay? I don't know. It's never easy to tell if your autosynclus is okay uh, until it moves several hours later. Um, but, yeah, so we've got those. We've got some ruby tetras, but I think I'm going to take them out of this tank and put them back into a Venezuelan tank uh, where they can hide and do their thing in that tank. They, I thought they would bring nice color, but these uh, Celestial Pearl Danios are... They're so subtle, and I just, I love them. I love their colors. And then now that we have Fry, which will be coming out to viewers, um, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. So um, you can see they're actually doing their little mating dance. Every time you guys have tuned in on live streams, the Endlers are doing their mating dance, which is cool. We also have a segregated female down here in a really dumb location, which is in the shrimp tank. She is... Uh, let's see here. Let's scoot over cold shrimp. Um, she is an endler, and she's super pregnant, but they decided to munch on a lot of their babies, so she's bigger, and I split them up. So that's what's going on with her right now, uh, and she'll rejoin the group as soon as she has those babies. I'll give the babies a little while in the shrimp tank just to kind of clean up some of the alfox and scuds and stuff like that. Uh as well as, uh, oh, I forgot to show you guys how the mystery fry are doing. They're no longer a mystery. We thought they were rainbow fish. Nope, they're gudgeons. So you can see their coloration starting to come out and their long fins. It doesn't really let me zoom in very well, but they're going to be definitely gudgeons with the, the lower finnage. You can see how long that is. Although now there is another odd fish in there with them. So maybe there's two kinds of fish. Maybe the, the plot thickens. But... Yeah, so that's what's going on in this tank. I've also just put up a video on how to breed or raise Celestial Pearl Daniels. Now, this really works for the, like, uh, Erythromicron, uh, Rasbora, Daniel, whatever you want to call it. The, the close relative, the striped version uh, that is right in here. Let's see if we'll see one. They usually hang out together. 
But in any case, they're really shy. There's those gold rings again. But what I did is I cut out a absolutely useless tank divider uh, that I bought for uh, putting across half a tank. Don't buy them from Petco or PetSmart. Just they're just build your own. Get a piece of glass or something. But um, I took that and I cut it up, and now I use the mesh for various projects. But I took one of these breeder boxes, and last night uh, I had a number of. You can probably see the eggs there. They're right under the mesh. There's one, two, three, four along the edge, and then there are. Let's see if you can see some up here. Um, you can kind of see. Well, maybe you can't. Uh, it's kind of hard to see with the reflection, but there are a couple eggs from having a group of them in there last night And so these these eggs so that they do not spoil will stay close to the water flow and then these actually Suction if you've got a flat breeding thing they kind of suction with the water to the side. So that's nice um, you kind of get a little bit of this side side swirling flow and that will help help the uh, eggs not rot. So I don't know if they laid on any of the vegetation in there, but I've left it in there. And probably tomorrow night, I will pen them up again after, or I mean tonight. So what I'll do is I'll take all this stuff and I'll push it down to the bottom. Also carefully take this with a little uh, pipette, clean up all the little eggs that are in there, put them at the bottom chamber, then replace this, uh, put a new piece of foliage up top, and then put more celestial pearls, like maybe three females, two males, and they breed in the first hour of the morning. So I am going to then like turn the light on for an hour and then we'll replace uh, them back into the tank. So that way it's really low intensity breeding, no stress so much. I mean, a little bit of stress for them to get in, put into the pen, but not a huge deal. So now, the next order of business is stuff is already getting too big in this, in this, uh, let's zoom out again, in the Iwagumi, uh, however you want to say it. Some people have been saying it differently, but I was always under the impression it was Iwagumi. So, uh, some of these things with the CO2, the Rotalo, Rotundophilia, uh, Vietnam Red or Pink, uh, has grown really quickly. So in two weeks, we've got six inches of it or so, uh, and the pink's starting to come out in it. it. It's looking really, well, I guess YouTube doesn't let me uh, focus color, or like calibrate color. So um, you're just gonna have to take my word that it has a lovely pink hue to it, if we can catch it. Uh, same with the other uh, Rotala Vietnam species that's back here that's another pink variant with more of a lime green stock. Uh, also back here we've got some what looks more unhealthy uh, like temple plants and things like that but they're doing well they're just growing so fast that uh, I need to trim them. Uh, says I have a very bad connection. Okay the bad, bad connection stopped. Okay. Now I have an amazing connection. I hope it's working out. Uh, this is a time you guys can always feel free to ask questions and so forth. Um, so then we've got the crypts and the low-lying plants. I've kind of taken the hornwort and chopped it up, and it grows so fast anyways that I can make these little false pine trees out of it. Um, and that's pretty cool. And the underside of these plants that look like they're kind of not doing so great actually are gorgeous. So... Just a little, uh, a little update on how this tank's doing. Been trying to get the bladder snails and pond snails out of this because this tank's, I'm babying it. Uh, also, I'm gonna go get more of this stone or maybe even use some of this stone for my aquascape in Dustin's planted fish tank. Uh, he's d coming to town and he's gonna be doing, um, doing some work you can see the pink here in the center which is just awesome so all these plants i've chosen have reds and pinks at some point in their life if you have co2 so uh except for the hair grass i i would say but basically uh dustin's from dustin's fish tanks come to town we're doing an aquascaping uh contest and that should be really fun and uh, keep up the great work. Always great content, and I've learned a lot from you. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you ever have suggestions, I always like new suggestions. I want to get back to the history videos and things. It's just I've been doing so much work on just building tanks 
within the like just building so i'll sell some of my shrimp i'll sell some of my plants whatever it may be and trading up and kind of upgrading in my mind anyways the the tanks frequently so uh i'm trying to find the cool nearite snail uh that is in here uh, i also have some miniature horned nearite snails that came from tampa aquaculture that's tampa aquaculture.com he's an independent fish farmer out of florida um as I said before, here these little fry are from the leopard. I'm calling them leopard, even though they are known as tiger endlers. My line has devolved uh, from the stripes being... Uh, the, the leopard spotting is more pr prominent, definitely. So I'm calling them leopards, but they've got a spade tail with blue. Right now they're in with one female, which is less than ideal. She just gave birth to... 23 children uh now they're at an age even just a week in uh they've been growing so quickly because of the daphnia and stuff that were already in the tank and copepods and scuds and stuff that i had released in here uh, oh here's one of those horned snails so you can see the little spikes now but they get really gnarly spikes on them and uh the nice thing about these is they don't reproduce like bladder snails or ram's horn snails or malaysian trumpet snails or whatever you want to uh say they don't reproduce like that uh, without brackish water, so you can keep the population wherever you want it. Now, that's both a plus and a minus, depending on how many you wanted uh, to have. As in here, where we've got more waste, these blue shrimp are taking forever to grow. So they're going on week three or four now, and they still aren't growing. Thanks for all you do for the hobby. Real information like yours is hard to find. Thank you so much. So let me address that real quick, D. Um, you know, I get it wrong sometimes. Like sometimes I screw up and I want to share when I do that. I'll try to make an amendment to the video or whatnot. Um, you know, I just noticed that one of my shrimps is dead. And that's, that's a reality of shrimp keeping. And so I'm going to pull this sorry little freshly dead shrimp out and take a look under my microscope later with what the heck went wrong. Um, that's a bummer. Um, but yeah, so the goal is, you know, oh, and here's another little horn near right. Sometimes their spikes are like sharp. Like when I picked them out of the bag, I thought they were going to be not that big of a deal but they are definitely predator proof like those spikes are designed to be sharp so be careful if you order those but they're really cool uh looking they they kind of develop really neat patterns as they get older let me show you what some of the patterns look like hello again wife hello um oh i see people around the corner too hi guys hi. um so here is a zebra nearite snail this is not the horny kind uh, ha, 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 ha. <clears throat> Sorry, I was a child for about two seconds. Uh, so this is a zebra nearite snail, normal type. Great, great, great for hard algae. So like the diatome algae, spot algae that's on stuff. That's what that's going to munch on. And I wish he was on the glass for you guys because their mouths look like they're, they're just like jump, 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 jump. They're always working. Uh... And then we've got, let's see here, the lemon tetras that everyone argues aren't lemon tetras. They are lemon tetras. They're an orange-eyed strain of lemon tetra. And uh, I, they just look nice. So up here, we still have in quarantine these new lights in a week. You can see the difference between the uh, water lettuce over here and the wa and that's water sprite too but the water lettuce in here has caused it's grown all the way to the bottom and the fish is that's not a dead fish up there by the way that's uh, just a leaf that's shining uh this guppy was ripping the fins off of my black moscow guppies here and so they have also been uh, dealt with i know this isn't uh, a subject that a lot of people want to hear about and that's why I'm going to talk about it. So, uh, let, let's ask some people that may not know the situation. So, Jenna, um, if you had a guppy that looked like these black ones here, the black tuxedo ones are black, and uh, yeah, like that one over there, 
and it had ribbons hanging out behind it. Like, it looks like flowing fins. And now it's snowing? It's hailing. 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 Okay. Really, really hard. Great. Tried to throw awesome. It was in, sunny when I started the video, and now it's hailing. Okay. And it's actually really good size hail. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so now, now we have one less guest that, host. Abby. Yeah, so, <clears throat> in any case... It's been hard keeping my fish tanks up to temperature with the weather around here. And these lights are rad, but it's also showing that I have too much nutrients in the tank because I'm getting algae. So I need some more algae control in this tank in the form of living critters. And also, I don't need to fertilize this tank anymore. Clearly, if a, a week of greenhousing does that, then... Uh, we have someone trying to break into the house. So this is what happens when you throw snowballs at me during snow. my live stream so he rides bikes that's a big part of him but it's hailing like crazy it's actually like i know this isn't fish related but check out this epic scene out here it was like blue sky and mountains and stuff and then it's just bang hailing i'll let him back in he has snow. i know he has snow uh, oh, he threw it down. He put his arms down. Okay, Ben, I need you for this question, too. So, I was telling the wonderful people how these new spotlights are bright, and they have created algae, which mm -hmm. I need to clean up. We need to address that soon anyways. But these guppies that have this incredible, as they call it, Dumbo ears. I live in Seattle, Washington, and yes, it is beautiful, but it is a billion dollars to live in a little cardboard box here. Um... By that, I mean, like, a good, like, 1700 to 4000 a month for, like, a decent apartment, especially if it has a view or something. We lucked out. We're kind of grandfathered in, but it's still expensive. Um, so I am limited on my fish-keeping means. Hence, YouTube also is, like, it's a good way to, like, connect with people, trade things. But so these black, these black fish, uh, they have flouncy tails they look great <laughs> and uh basically the males have this incredible finish here you can see i have yet to see a another male guppy with such long uh pectoral fins uh they are at dumbo ear is what they're called in in that case and very flouncy but Wow, the gudgeons are up in the upper water. That's never a good sign. They're usually going to cause problems. Uh, so the females are a little less flouncy, and the you can see there she's recovering. Sorry about the glare, guys. Let's move this light a little bit. So that made it worse. Eh? Eh? Should one of us hold a flashlight? Uh, well, in any case... What kind of content do you plan for your channel? So basically the channel I have, my hope is to do in the long term videos that are like interviewing people who have bred specific lines of fish and uh, done really interesting work, research and things like that, as well as talking about the history. I want to talk about like for instance, fish that are old, older than dinosaurs. Uh, I want to talk about that we still keep. I want to talk about uh, their way, the ways that fish adapt and new science that's coming out, uh, medicinal plants in the underwater world, like all sorts of science-related stuff I'm interested in. But this channel has also become, just because people seem to want more content too, uh, I am putting out... Uh, the, the content is meant for... Um, everyday catch up and then you can kind of cherry pick if you don't want to watch these videos or if you don't have questions <laughs> um you know then you can watch just the ones like the history of plecos and the naming uh but yeah it's a good question i know it wasn't for me i see now in the chat that was for someone else but um yeah so let's get back to the guppies the the channel i'm planning on doing more long-term info um Thank you so much for digging the shrimp stuff. And people tore me apart on the shrimp videos. Like, I got all sorts of crazy private messages. 
And then I asked them, well, what would you correct? And nobody had anything to add to it. They're like, I just don't think that's the way it went. And I'm like, well, I've talked to marine biologists. I talked to someone who specializes in studying crustaceans in fresh water. And I talked to a geneticist who happens to be watching the channel. And uh, so it's just kind of like a... I I guess a lot of people want to criticize when they're not like actively putting into it, but I may get some things wrong. Shrimp uh, morphology within Neocaridina davidi is insane because it was a proprietary like hobby, like big shrimp slash pet industry, like Petco and and uh, PetSmart. They market these things just like Celestial Pearl Daniels were a trendy thing around 2008 when they hit the market. Um, they're hip like my friend Ben. Oh, thanks. Oh, did you lock your wife out now? Oh, you're, you're one day to be really slip of the tongue. Um, but in any case, yeah, so it's, it's a marketing thing. And so it's been hard to figure out why certain lines of shrimp have formed the way they have. It's just kind of evolved, uh, through word of mouth, and then genetic testing is starting. But everyone's like, you didn't genetically test. No, I didn't. I talked to somebody who's working on it. So people aren't watching the whole videos and stuff like that. But I just wanted to clear up that any information I put out is the result of trying to find at least three sources. And then from there, I work out what what the truth is. If it's not uh, discernible, then I'll present both views. Like in the shrimp thing, like there's multiple ways we've arrived at multiple shrimp. Uh, now I wanted to get back to my little guppy problem. So can I get my viewer panel back in here? So one of these is not really a fish fan. And uh, we'll have, it's like, uh, what's your line? Isn't that the, that old show? Whose line is it anyway? Line is it anyway? No, older than that. Like 1960s where there was like one person who's lying or two people who are lying and one person selling the truth. Was that a show? It's not a game. To tell the truth. It's a game show. Yeah, it was a game show. Based on the game. Well, thank you. I'm glad, Kathy. Thank you, Dee and Kathy, that you like my shrimp explanations. I'm going to try to go into Caradina shrimp, but I feel like I should get some as props first. So I might go to someone's house who keeps a lot of them who's very knowledgeable because I've only yeah. kept minimal numbers. So we have our panel. All right, panel. Yes. So look, Ben looks real professional. Oh my God. Thanks. Good thing you're in a union. Please, <laughs> uh, they try and work as little as possible. Yeah. So yeah, you get that triple time, man. Uh, so we have quadruple time. Is that a thing? Okay. All right, so we've got these uh, guppies with long, flouncy ribbons. Well, they did have them. Some still have a few of them. Is flouncy the technical term? Flouncy's not the technical term. Okay. Thank you very much for making me look like an idiot. I was just wondering if it's a fish term. Or if it's you yeah, the fish actually have nomenclature amongst themselves, and that is the term that they've decided. Uh, no, they're called ribbons. And the fins would be called uh, leer or lyre, maybe, like when they split. But the different tails all have names like delta and stuff like... I'm gonna, I'll do a video on guppy tails and the names. How would that be? I'm sure... Wife, doesn't that sound thrilling? Riveting. I would watch. So are you going to get to the really genetic level? And is it going to be a <laughs> Is it going to be like a phenotype aspect or is it going to be a... Yeah, it's all phenotype, yeah. There's okay. no genetics to it in the sense of... They're all still the same species in, in that sense. But there is Nobody's looking dominant at versus... Dominant yeah, yeah, that's all sorted out. Like, oh, yeah. the guppy people are hardcore. Uh, so, and I am a guppy person, too. Well, hey, what's up, Cecilia? Welcome. Uh, is it pronounced thigh, uh, hang, uh, thigh? Uh, welcome, all of you, in any case. Uh, I appreciate those of you who hit the like button. Um, so, viewer panel, you have a guppy. You find out that these ribbons that are supposed to be beautiful and they've been selectively uh, bred, Tihang. Okay, cool. Welcome. So, you find out that they are beautiful. There's pictures of what they looked like before mm -hmm. the incident that we will discuss occurred. Yeah. So, now you find out that those uh, fins and feathers feathering of the fins causes bacterial and fungal infections frequently. So, 
it's kind of like circumcision. Do you do you risk taking a part of that fish away now knowing that it's been man-made and bred? Do you do you do that and you trim back some of the finnage sterilely of course with clove oil? And what? You know you're on film, right? So when you whisper something, we can all see what it is. What did I say? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> all right, continue. Continue. <laughs> okay. All right, so. The, the fin? So the fin. They get, uh, we've got some trolls on my channel that are just like, like showing pictures of, like on the chat, they've got a. Eggplant, 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 like... Is that supposed to be a dick? Like, yeah, like, yeah, that's correct. Well, yeah. Well, I think we've all learned something. Penis? Sorry. Penis. Sorry. That, we can say that. YouTube will allow that. If you say dick, they'll but, demonetize it. Ooh, wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, you just lost me all the money that I'm not making oh, off this yeah. video anyways. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So, uh, but I try to be family friendly to some degree. Like, if your family's all adults... Um, <laughs> <laughs> with dirty mouths. with yeah on a sailing ship yeah. so in that sense i am a very family friendly uh, <laughs> okay so do you cut those fins yeah cecilia for sure i've checked out your channel i love it check out cecilia's channel by the way guys uh I haven't given her enough As props you noted, yet. We're, non, we're all non-experts, so from what I know, if I'm the most engaged, is there some way to take the fish out and like uh, help it to like heal from an infection of this sort? Yes. It's just going to be systemic, and you have to change the water or change the preparation of water to try to minimize that issue. So that's a great question. Um, uh, Before you start trying to yeah, I will need a, a mod next week or next month probably. So thank you, guys, for the mod. Uh, I know several of you um, have volunteered, so I appreciate that. So yes, you can quarantine the fish. Whoa, that looks really green. It's not that green, guys. I swear. It's just these lights are coming through. Uh, that, that's what the tank looks like. It's not green, um, but you can put them aside. Mm -hmm. And you can put uh, either, let's see here, we've got things like for ick, because they're way more susceptible, the more surface area and the more communal fish is, the more it gets ick, the less it can run from other fast fish. Like you can see this guy's trying to motor along really quickly, yeah. but he can't make it as quick as the wild type body style guppies, such as these ones up here. So they're like the pugs of the They're fish like world. the pugs of the fish they're world. They're like all fucked up. Huh? Yeah. They're all messed up. Yeah. No, you're we a... like, here's the weird thing though, right, Jenna? We like, humans like these decorative characteristics. Thank you so much, D. Evolutionarily Dee. negative is like something that I've noticed, so. Yeah. So, in any case, then you can set them aside and you can add like this sort of thing, um, which is just erythromycin. So you can use antibiotics that yeah, you'd use. You can just use a uh, dog dewormer like Levomasol and things like that, like Advantix. Uh, don't, go, don't quote me on Advantix. I haven't checked that one out. But you can buy dog dewormer that the active ingredient is Levomasol, which happens to also be in 99% of cocaine, uh, little tip. Uh, they put it in there so it doesn't rot when they smuggle it across the, the border. Uh, family friendly TV. Um, yes, I am doing summer tubbing also. I'm going to be doing Celestial Pearl Daniels, uh, Erythromicrons, and probably Meteor Minnow, White Cloud Minnows um, for your question, T. So, um, yes, you can treat those, but they become problems, and then they lose parts of their finnage, and it's an issue. So, so if they still lose their finnage, then is it better to just cut it first? Right. So it's kind of like, um, do you cut the fin of these fancy fish who are breeders, so you know they have that trait, and if they're going to be in a show tank or sold for that purpose, you can keep them safer in a community tank by trimming their fins, which will grow back sometimes, but... It's mean, right? So basically, you can put clove oil and water together with a little bit of solvent of some sort. There's lots of different recipes online. 
Um, basically, an alcohol would be too harsh on the fish, but you need something to break up the clove oil to mix with the water yeah. better. And you can perform surgery on your little fish with just a few drops of clove oil, which is expensive oil. But that actually happened. So these guppies have had surgery. Um, and it is now three or four weeks after surgery, I think. And one of their tails is still growing back. I didn't cut that tail. It got ripped off before I got to it. And I just cut a nice round tail. I know that sounds mean, but look how bad the injuries can be. Um, uh, uh, eugenol. Okay, eugenol. Thank you, Cecilia. Eugenol is a way... Okay, so you can see that right there. Like, it is some scar tissue forming. This this fish does not want to get on camera. But keeping it in a community tank, it has sustained damage. I know, you can keep, the, you can keep them without fin nippers. I didn't realize this was going to be a problem because my biggest fin nipper is actually the other guppies. So none of the tetras and stuff have bugged them too much. It's the guppies. So... Um, now, what if I told you that the fin that is the most prominent on the male, who is the most splendid if you uh, go by guppy judging standards, was actually its penis? What? So. Could you repeat that? Yes. <laughs> I didn't hear you. So the guppies, these long tail ribbon guppies, have. Um, they have a fin, and it's curved almost like a gutter in the center of the fin. And they have bred that so long, it's called a gonopodium. And they use that usually, and they tuck it up into the woman's... Because they give live birth. So they, they use that fin, they swim up next to the female, into and the got into the lady fishes. And um, basically, I, I have a video of blue endlers doing that very naturally, gracefully... It's very um, calming, I guess. It's like, like uh, it's, it feels like a nature channel, like David Attenborough might be watching and saying something more graceful than me. Um, with but David Attenborough. Da with David Attenborough. So, so basically, they, they normally need that gonopodium to tuck in. So now... Without that gonopodium, or with that gonopodium so long, what do you think happens to... Uh, feel free to contact you. Okay, D, have a good one. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, so, the gonopodium. It's so long, it sticks out an inch behind the fish. So this fish is literally dragging its penis, or the equivalent, its member, behind itself. It is... <laughs> yeah, like the literalization of a lot of humor that we've heard. Yeah, about men being held back is such impediment. <laughs> Usually, it's more of a state of mind, but you know. That's so, <laughs> okay. The literal so to get them to breed, you in fact do have to cut that. <gasps> but you, you want to get them to a, a large enough size that you can see for show purposes how long it is. And I think this is kind of cruel to even breed this creature with a um, genitalia set that is so large that it's dragging behind it like a, a boat anchor. <laughs> and, and it almost looks like a fishing lure. It splits off. This is a subspecies trait? Um... This is a, so it's not a new species, it's not a subspecies, it is a strain. So it is a selective bred. Here's okay. a nice healthy one for you guys watching. You wouldn't even the call black it guppies. Subspecies trait. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Uh, someone said, I thought you just br bred the males with less gonopodium because they still carry that gene. So, yes, you could do that, but you're not going to get the maximum gene yeah. you may get some with it and then be stuck in the same problem again when you select those but if you're trying to make yeah. a better stream uh that's not the way to do it uh, a better strain so you actually want to trim them and if done correctly sterilely with like an exacto knife or a razor blade scalpel 
um, that's brand new and clean, you can do a crescent cut on that gonopodium, and they will then be able to breed. And it looks like one of my females may now have babies in her. But I found out that they may have hit the auction spot because they weren't well, they able to breed. Good. So, um, right yeah, it is really hailing out. Not that that pertains to fish, but I think it's cool. Can you introduce you the Corys? Uh, oh, I haven't introduced the Corys. So we decided yeah, today that, that uh, you know, you guys know I have Corys in this tank. But we have officially named all the Corys the Corys. Who are the other Corys? Can we get some more Corys from the girls? I know Corey you. Corey Haim and Corey Feldman are the only Corys that matter. Rest in oh, peace, come on. Corey Haim. I was waiting it's for really that sad. too. I wish sad. Corey Feldman wasn't going through so much. He just looks troubled. A lot of Corey McElroy? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. McElroy? Uh, but yeah, he can be there because we got a lot of fish to name. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, let's see, we got Corey. Google the Corys. Corey Hughes. Ask your Corey at Aquarium Co-op. Hey guys, be nice. He, uh, we shop at Aquarium Co-op a lot, um, and I do have a real bulky, like strong looking. Corey Hart? It's a singer. It's a singer? Okay. They're still working on the Corey project. Okay. (laughs) So, but I do have a big old uh, Corey Dora Julii that could be Corey from Aquarium Co-op because it's like the king of the tank. And you know he's the king of this uh, YouTube thing at the moment. Uh, Well, I guess the king of DIY is. He really is. Um... But yeah, oh, here you can see the fins, poor fins, when I didn't trim anything or take care of anything. Uh, the other females actually beat up on her, not the male. Really surprising. But these ones uh, are post, post uh, cosmetic surgery, and they're doing great. The male used to have a gonopodium that was out way far, and I trim that and then now i've decided i don't want to breed these i think it's too icky of a process to have to like castrate or circumcise your fish and deal with that um but i i I, that's why i tend to keep endlers and non-flauncy fish because the flauncies just get picked 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 on but yeah i've got quarries so if you guys know some other important quarries please feel free to submit names because we can't important. we can't tell them apart. Yeah, real important Corys. Okay. So, wow. I don't think I've seen it hail like this this long for a while in Seattle. So, okay. Now we're going over to the other tank real quick. We'll just do an update. This is a lighthearted update. I'm just waiting for Q&As. Um, we got more uh, gold ring Danios. And I was going to put them in the Danyo tank with all the Myanmar fish, but instead I ended up tossing them into my uh, Nigerian crib tank. Now, there's an issue with the crib, and this is where I'd love some input if anybody's raised cribs before. She has two pink spots, and I can't tell if they're scales that have been damaged or if, uh, because she does play rough with the male sometimes when they're doing their mating dance or scraped herself right here on the coconut maybe um, when she slides in there sideways. So I can't figure out what caused that, but I was a little bit worried about that. Um, Now in here, we've also got endlers. Uh, All the endlers in here are female. And so I've been selecting for, uh, I've been selecting for colorful females like this one here so that I can tell them apart later on. Like these orange tails are great because then if they breed with this guy, I mean, I, I de- ideally I want them to have white traits and that was a latent trait. I thought they'd turn out different, but um, they turned out that way. So, whatever. Um, I'm still gonna try breeding them with the Japanese blue endler. That's, that's the ultimate goal is to get More Japanese blue leer tail endlers. Here's another female. She's the best candidate. She should give birth soon. She's got blue Dumbo ears. Um, She is an endler. 
Guppy Hybrid. We've got another Auto Synkless in here. I think I need about an army of them to work on some of the algae issues. Uh, I put a little bit of uh, Easy Green and mentioning Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Uh, we had some Easy Green in here um, that I use. I use a pump per gallon once in a while. And uh, yeah, they're, those look like uh, Guppy and their crosses. They totally are. So here is the male right here. And uh, he's probably a cross with some Guppy would be my guess. Just by size too. And by uh, belly, he's got a bigger belly than a lot of them. But all these other ones are females, other than the rocket killifish or clown killifish, are female versions of this same line here. So that's what's been spitting out. And it's obviously real mixed if I'm getting pink and stuff too from it. So these plainer ones were the ones that came with him at the same age. But... Uh, I wanted to mix traits with different tails and Dumbo ears so that I could track several lineages of females rather than just the males later on. Because I'm not scientifically, I don't have enough tanks to play musical tanks and separate them all. And so uh, I still want to breed a variety of guppies, but it, they won't be a pure strain. Unlike my leopard endlers, which are a nice pure strain where I've been selecting super heavily, like sometimes I don't keep any of the babies. I'm looking for the nearite snails. I got a whole boatload of those spiky nearite snails, the horn zebra nearite snails, as well as the normal nearite snails. He also has all sorts of assassin snails at tampaaquaculture.com. Um, what floral wire, what are you using the floral wire for? Uh, floral wire. Oh, that you saw over here? Um, Basically, I'm not using it for anything in this tank right now. Um, you want to know what I use the floral wire for, and it's kind of comical, actually. The floral wire I used for a DIY project most recently. Where'd it go? Uh, sorry, guys. I know it's a mess. Fish people are weird people. I'm a weird person. Um, where is... I have a little net that I made out of the floral wire, and, oh, here it is. All right, so I made this net. I made a, hey, what's up, fake name? How's it going? Uh, we have a guest panel. This is kind of a goofy one today. I talked a little bit about CPD breeding. There's some eggs in here, some CPD eggs underneath that mesh. Uh, tonight, I'm going to do another flush of them. Also talked a little bit about the uh, nearite snails that I got from TampaAquaculture.com. Uh, oh, the synchless has moved. Uh, the auto synchless has moved. And uh, we've got all sorts of Danios in here. I think I'm going to move the Ruby Tetras. Hey, what's up, David? Uh, how's it going? Um, but yeah, so the floral wire that I was asked about, what I did, and it hasn't worked out long term. You can see what a nasty piece of junk this is. Worked great for two weeks, but what I did was I took the floral wire, I twisted it around and made a rim for a basket, then I crisscrossed it and I made a frame for a basket, and then I took um, some, some cellophane and with a heat gun I actually uh, shrunk, shrunk it. Uh, the plastic around the frame inside and out and then I for a while I had a nice basket to sh Scoop out baby shrimp real quickly when I was separating like here I've got all my wild shrimp and I since I don't care that much about them. I, they're with the baby gudgeons um, And you can see that blue eye on some of the baby gudgeons. Let's see. Can you see it? Here and then the long fin underneath the body. So they're definitely not guppies or anything like that. The only thing I thought they could be was forktail rainbows, but they're not. Also, in the same place that we left it, did you try a turkey baster? Yeah, turkey baster works great. Um, problem is, I just, um, sometimes I'm like very targeted with who I'm scooping and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so the nearite snail... There's one that's really spiky, and it's pretty small. It's like maybe a centimeter long. Um, 
Brian Shrimp Net makes a fantastic baby shrimp net. Yeah, thanks for the advice. Definitely. I need to buy one. I've just been spending all the money that I make um, off of uh, trading, buying and selling trading fish, basically, into putting it into live critters and lights and uh like little breeding stuff i need to get co2 also this this tank is already out within a week um and that's at a, a drop or a bubble of a minute or a second or so and i don't recommend that tank if you can buy something else also i'm trying to rid this tank of all of the bladder snails or pond snails whatever you want to call them so whenever i see one i use my aquascaping gear and I try to get it out and I just put it back into the shrimp tank and they eat a lot of the clutter in the shrimp tank but uh, okay back to the panel so this is gonna be summing up our show today um, I want to hear from each of you first off your favorite fish freshwater oh I like plecos, you know that. Plecos. I like salmon. Had a okay, have fish we can keep in a home aquarium, guys. <laughs> I had some delicious uh, wing cod yesterday. That is salt water, <laughs> and we don't <laughs> keep it in an aquarium. <laughs> They're freaking huge. Have you seen cod? They're freaking massive. <laughs> you said that's our favorite fish. <laughs> oh, man, though. That salmon cod that made me hungry. <laughs> okay, my other answer is Trey Anastasio. My from party. the band fish. The band fish. <laughs> so he my wife he is pretty talented. Okay, so <laughs> you are a fish head. All right. That's what I do to Ben when he Yeah. Me. Okay, so the other two of you guest stars. Uh, and these are my first guests on the show who know nothing in the way as expert at, as well, fish. I am not saying I'm an expert at fish either. <laughs> but I like the one in that tank that has the weird fin, the weir weird tail fin. Oh, the blue endler. Maybe. Maybe. The, the is it tail. the bright blue one with it's the split the tail? Split tail yeah. With the stripe on the side. Yeah. Ben said it was a guppy, and I, I was, was like, "That's not a guppy." There, it's part guppy, part endler, and somebody caught that in the chat when I was over there. Um, but yeah, so you're both right. Okay, so she likes the the end the endler the blue Japanese endler. I like it for its perkiness. And how bright it is. That's why I like you. <laughs> okay. Like <laughs> ben, you like plecos. Do you have a favorite pleco? Uh, we had a leopard pleco. So a leopard? Ooh, so that's like L136 or something? Leopard frog one? Possibly. Remember, remember we had this amazing spheric tank at one point. And, uh, it wasn't ours. Yeah, it wasn't really ours. It ended up going... And it wasn't really a pleco. And it wasn't really... Probably not... This was his imaginary fish. <laughs> no, no, the fish actually existed, remember? Okay, I have a fish. Okay. I have like a real fish. answer. What's your, your answer? Your new snails. The little one? Not a fish! <laughs> <laughs> I was also waiting for that. Not also fish. not a fish. You failed. You failed. You failed. You there. It hasn't moved for like four hours. So <laughs> Laura likes, my <laughs> wife likes the the, door the, like the snail door. that hasn't moved in like four hours Corey. that eats like hard Corey algae. Doris. Oh yeah, and I really but like the Cory. And she likes Cory Haim apparently. <laughs> Rest in Honestly, those those tetras are looking really great right yeah, now. Yeah. In this tank. So this tank has a lot, a lot of nice <laughs> movement. I just know uh, when a fish is looking fly, okay? Cherry Don't shrimp. Even worry. <laughs> You're not fired a too, T Hen. Uh, like but yeah, so this tank, you'd think it's full so to the max, is, uh, but nitrates cheese. are right. actually okay. down pretty okay. low. So, okay, and now from from the fans, do we have any questions? We're gonna pretend like these people are experts at fish. Okay, so I need I some crowd funny. participation. I, I, I find that funny. Do we have any questions that have been dogging any of you about your fish tank care? And I will correct. Or about our personal yes. lives. Yeah, they totally are, Kathy. Non-fish people are like the muggles to our nerdy little world. Um, Jenny, you have So she's also before. a Harry Potter nerd. So she's also... <laughs> oh, you got called out, Kathy, that's for being a Harry Potter cool nerd, too. because I, I actually, you know, I'm pro-book, so that's good. You're pro-book. I'm pro books in general. But he's anti-Harry Potter. Well, I read most of them, which is really hard for people to Okay, so while they're, 
Well, since this is, uh, this is, I'm not getting questions generated. I guess they have no faith in the panel. Like, Sorry, guys. You, uh, so, uh, do, yeah, if you guys have questions about fish, ask her the life cycle of a salmon. Ooh. Ooh, put your money where your mouth is, salmon girl. Starts in the Come on, river, and then I swim. Let me do it. <laughs> Okay, on, so they to. are the eggs are laid in freshwater streams. Okay. In the rocks. So they need the parent fish, it just dies. It like puts its spawn in, and then the parent fish. So the parent, so so the parent just like. They just give their last energy to lay the to, to just have, spring have sex and make eggs and fertilize, lay, the, eggs. fertilize the eggs in the rocks. They're mm. easily disturbed. Um, and okay, and then the fish hatches in fresh water. <laughs> it's just so you can hear. You're that's zooming all. Zooming okay. in on me. It's because you're getting quieter. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry because I'm being serious because I like salmon to eat. When you, you're serious, you should get more powerful in your voice. I know it's the opposite. Okay, so they okay the parents die. the 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 eggs hatch and they uh, they are in the fresh water and they live in the fresh water until they're big enough to start swimming out into the ocean, and then uh -huh. they go to the ocean, and they live in the ocean for a little while, and I think they change color when they're there or something. Get a hump. Yeah. Years, generally. They, they, go, they reach adulthood, and then when they're at sexual maturity, they swim against the current out of the ocean, back in the fresh water. They gotta swim upstream to go back and lay their eggs where they were born. And in the their old native theory rocks. is that they're scenting, right? The old factory scent, or their scenting of the water allowed them to find the stream in which they came down when they were young, and now I believe the theory is that that's not exactly so exact. They that's think exactly it could be so geomagnetic, perfect. even possibly. And only about one in one thousand salmon survive to return. To See, their I don't remember that statistic, but I knew it was pretty low. So. Yeah, only about one in one thousand. <laughs> Someone said, "Would fish do better in a nice dry in a nice dry water, or just stick with the cheap wet stuff?" That's great. What is that? I, that's a great joke. Cheap. Sure. Cheap. Go with the cheap. <laughs> like champagne, I recommend. Water, the wet stuff? You, I like you that, stick yeah. with that. Uh, if you're talking about hard water, like limestone, uh, a little is okay. A lot is not. Uh, okay, so do you run carbon in your tanks? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have a tank. You don't even have tanks. I could. You mean she, carbon in the sense of like uh, a filter or as a filter? Yeah. So carbon is good for I plants, do, and some you? people I do at times. Yeah. Uh, if you've used medication or if there has been a bacterial issue, you can use carbon to trap fine particulates. But for chemical filtration, that's what you use carbon for. Let me show you real quick. Activated carbon. Uh, then? It is activated. Activated yeah, it's an activated carbon oh, charcoal, usually from bone. So if you're vegan. You probably don't want to be dealing with it. <clears throat> um, but here's a bag of charcoal. It essentially goes back into the, the hang off the back that I have. And that will clear out chemicals in your in your system. Like if you use ix, ix, ix or if you think you dose too much iron, something like that, it'll help take care of that. Whereas uh, it also takes out some of the fine bacteria, plankton, things like that, if it's pushing it through. But it also, there's coconut carbon. Thanks, Kathy. So there is a vegan source of activated. That's awesome. They must make it of coir of the, uh, the, the um, shell. The hard part. The hard yeah. Shell. That's cool because for a long time I had a lot that of vegan sense. friends that like didn't use charcoal products because oftentimes it's burnt bone. Because also that's high in calcium and, and strong purity. Everyone of, associates uh, gelatin as being from bone, but a lot of the gelatin sourced is now from skin, my understanding. Oh, that's way better. Skin. No pig skins <laughs> and actually uh, uh, leathers, basically like animal leathers. Okay, so in all, uh, thank you guys for the panel. Thank you, Jenna, Ben, and, uh, and my wife, Lara, for paying so much attention and learning today what a fish is. Wait, okay. what's a fish again? <laughs> okay, so... Is this going to be on the test? <laughs> yeah, it'll be on the test. I cut my own hair, by the way, much to my wife's chagrin. Oh my goodness. 
and That's a terrible thing to leave on. And uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think that I can join Flock of Seagulls any day now. Um, my fish like it, so that's what counts. Do you still have a one, like the one? But um, so let me leave you guys on this note. Uh, basically, I will be having next week. Oh, thanks for my, uh, Kathy B says my whole crew is cute and fun. Yay! Thanks. You guys thanks, are. Thanks, Kathy. We like you. We, care about the crew. we get. Can we? Can we get a, a thank you to Kathy? Yeah. Thanks, get, Kathy. Thanks, thank you Kathy. To Kathy. Okay. Well, thank you, and they're awesome, intelligent people. That's why I hang out with them. It's weird. This uh, YouTube live stream makes one eye brown and one eye blue, depending on where I'm standing, whereas it's blue outside uh, with the light from outside. It almost looks like the apocalypse is approaching outside, too, right now. It has changed dramatically. I don't know if we can get it. First started we won't adjust, it but yeah. all right, we're way off track from fish. So I'm going to take a step outside. You guys talk about dinner plans. I'm going to finish up with the folks on the channel real quick. So basically uh, the channel, I'm going to be doing some more videos on uh, history and things like that. Taking my time to edit those. Uh, don't it make your brown eyes blue? Yeah, that's right. Uh, they're kind of green outside now. I don't know. I have weird gray eyes. Um, if you were a fish, what would you guys be? Well, I'd have blue eyes probably. So, a gudgeon! Because they've ruined my life. And I do that pretty well too. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching. This was a goofy little episode. And, um,. You know, just kind of had some friends over in town, and I wanted to include them. So thank you for humoring me and watching if you did. Uh, I know there's going to be people who are probably like, that's a lame video, Alex. Like, sorry, it wasn't super fish informational. Uh, next week, we will have the aquascaping contest, and Dustin's planted fish tanks in town, as well as I've invited people from Aquarium Co-op crew to come be in the competition I haven't heard anything back so I'm gonna go visit, play them a visit see what's up Swiski Vision see if he's interested uh, calling you out now Bob from uh, Steam Fought Aquatics calling him out too if he wants to come and join there's still spots for the two of y'all uh, we're not letting store owners participate like like anywhere in the region just because they have so much access to and we're letting people bring stuff to crazy awesome things um, what has the highest female to male ratio in the fish world? Yeah, that's a good species to be, I suppose. Um, although fish, like, you know, they just pester each other. Most don't mate. They just do their thing with the... Or they mate, but they don't have intercourse. They have milt that they spray out into the world. And the other ones have a fin that we talked really extensively about today that tucks things into places or fans it towards places but thank you guys for sticking with me um my mouth's getting dry Blech. um as always i appreciate it a lot and i'll be coming up with some videos on my myanmar tank i want to talk about some of the fish that we're going to be not seeing soon so congo fish that are now being cut off from the trade uh as well as Myanmar fish cut off from the trade now because of uh, the Rohingya violence going on and uh, also you know I want to talk about dinosaur fish and anything else so you guys leave comments in any of my videos or whatever and uh, I'll try to get to them I'll try to talk about it I want to keep talking more about shrimp because people always have a million questions about shrimp so uh, yeah I want to get more information on that. You love chili rasboras? Let's do some stuff on chili rasboras. I might get some chili rasboras for that other tank. Especially since I'm taking out the ruby, um, the ruby tetras. Because one, they've turned less red in that tank. And two, they just hide behind the rock all day long. Um, hey man, setting up a puffer tank? Awesome. Good luck with that. I would love to see a video or some pictures or something of that um uh, yeah feel free to i don't know i wish you could comment with pictures on facebook 
I'm gonna start getting more involved in Instagram. I'm gonna try to, you need to cut my hair. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. My wife was actually, I was a photographer at a really swanky event downtown yesterday. And uh, I did this like really artsy um, haircut. And she was, gave me money to go get a haircut. She was so serious, like, I'll pay for your haircut. And I showed up with this and she didn't think it was funny. <clears throat> but other people liked it, so that's okay. Um, meteor minnows rock, I agree. We'll talk about that. We're gonna be talking about spring tubbing too. Uh, I have this deck. This is my this is my place to uh, to tub. Let's see, can I give you a tour? All right, there's the tour. Uh, it's 12 feet by I want to say six feet or eight, seven feet, seven feet. And so I plan on doing Rubbermaids with heaters in them. And then also we have a little garden plot down yonder. And it's a community garden. And so I plan on digging some holes in the ground to insulate things. And then putting a, a, some, a cover of some sort on there to do some meteor minnows and stuff like that. Just experiment, try a couple things uh, and see what I can get out of it. So um, thank you guys for watching as always. I'll try to do more of the history videos and more of the informational stuff. You can always go back. I've been making so many videos just because uh, I, I'm kind of trying to get to the level where I can do things like um, aquaponics and grow some food. Yeah, um, totally. I, I was going to talk about that initially when I set up the channel. That was a big interest of mine. I've done it before. I've done big scale, like where you convert a swimming pool into a tilapia aquaponics or trout aquaponics. So yeah, we can talk about that. I've, I've done quite a bit of work with that. I have my friend in there actually, it happens to be Ben, actually happens to be uh, a permaculture engineer. So he's kind of the perfect guy to talk to. We can have him back more seriously. He doesn't know as much about the fish except for specific species that are used for that. but. Um, yeah so thanks guys for watching keep a uh, lookout for next weekend dustin will be in town on thursday friday saturday sunday maybe and i think we're going to do a tour of um charades inside yeah i don't know what's going on in there they're waving um but basically uh him and i are going to tour some local fish shops we got permission to film in some shops that never let us film uh so that's cool and then we're also going to be picking up supplies. So there'll probably be a couple of videos with Dustin and Dustin's planted fish tanks. And I don't know, hopefully some of the aquarium co-op guys come out too. Uh, I'm trying to be the intermediate. If anybody noticed the fish drama a couple years ago, uh, I'm, I'm here to bring peace if possible. I know I'm a small channel, but randomly I got in touch with Dustin via a local aquarium store, uh, ADA dealer where I get a lot of my nano fish. Uh, he called that store and I was standing there and the guy was like, well, I don't know anything about YouTube, but this guy does. And that's how I got in touch with Dustin. So, and then he checked out my stuff and was like, awesome. Uh, you're my point guy on the ground. So kind of cool. All right, so are you guys take care, take care of your fish, take care of yourselves. We'll have something more scientific in the future uh, and more detailed. Uh, and take care, you guys. Uh, swim on, guys. Take care. <laughs>